I hope you've been enjoying our podcasts we've been producing, and we invite you to please subscribe to our channel so you do not miss out on the latest legal developments. Today's podcast, a very timely issue, this is coming up in the news a lot, has to do with expressing opinions at work. Can I express an opinion at work without getting fired? Whoa. First question is, what kind of opinion are we talking about? Certain things are not opinions. For example, the Facebook whistleblower. She believes that Facebook policies of allowing certain kinds of misinformation have been damaging teenage girls and others. She expresses that. She complains about that. That is not an opinion. The law does not view that as an opinion. That is a potential whistleblower disclosure, and there may be a number of protections for that kind of disclosure. Does it have to do with the safety regulation? Is there an OSHA violation? Is there bank fraud? Is there something else? A number of states have a public policy exception to wrongful termination. Generally, Everyone in America is employed at will. Anyone can be fired for any reason at all legally except a bad one, such as discrimination, retaliation, complaining about discrimination, then getting terminated, or whistleblowing. So if that's the case, the employee should check, certainly with an attorney, who would be able to inform that person whether that person's state or sometimes even city or county has a particular whistleblower retaliation law that will protect that person. That is the first category of expressing opinions at work. Now we get to the more conventional one, political. This happens all the time around election time. You'll notice that some people at the office are generally very proud to put up whatever banner, button, poster, bumper sticker about their candidate, either running for president, senate, governor, or something else. And then others just aren't going to do that. Whether you call them the silent majority, the silent people, whatever you want to call them. The question is, can an employer flat out say to somebody, you're a Trump supporter, I don't like you, you're fired? That's not such a simple question. First of all, the question is, who does this person work for? The federal government for federal employees prohibits that kind of discrimination unless the person is a very, very high-end policymaker. And you'll see this with every new administration, there's going to be a new head of the Food and Drug Administration. There's going to be a new head of transit. I mean, there's going to be lots and lots of new secretaries, lots and lots of deputies. Those people, the president has the right to pick. And in fact, that's part of why that president got elected, to be able to enact his policies and he or she is going to do that with the people in these very high-level positions that the president nominates and gets through the Senate. So obviously people like that, of course there's political discrimination. But for the lower-level employee, the federal government is not allowed to discriminate against somebody for their political affiliation or for their political beliefs. Certain states have that kind of protection. For example, New York, California, the District of Columbia, same type of laws. Certain counties in Maryland, Prince George's County, for example, has protections against political action or political affiliation discrimination. So it's important to know whether you're one of those protected people. Now, even if you are, all right, the employer still may not like your opinion. And the employer can be on the lookout for any sort of disruption that you're making about it. Okay, so whatever the topic of the day is, in 2021, right now in October, 
one of the big issues that seems to never go away is this vaccinated versus unvaccinated situation. Some people, many people have gotten the COVID vaccine. Other people don't have the COVID vaccine. There are people who may have really good reasons not to get the COVID vaccine. Some people have medical conditions. They're allergic to the COVID vaccine. Other people have certain religious beliefs about it. Things like some of the COVID vaccines have been tested on fetal tissue and religious groups that are against abortion object to it on those grounds. It's, it's not as simple as just people are stupid and they, they don't think and they don't believe in science or anything like that. I had dinner once with a psychologist in Florida, PhD, double PhD. She didn't believe in the vaccine at all. I mean, it was an intelligent person. I mean, I disagreed with her. But she was a scientist of some kind and had a belief. This can be very, very contentious. So there's an idea of expressing an opinion. There's then another idea of expressing an opinion that's going to start workplace confrontations and chip away at the employer's productivity requirements. That is not protected. Then there are morons that say some of the dumbest things about groups of people or organizations that represent groups of people that say it in a very inartful way or a very mean way. Okay, we had an inquiry once where someone had said something at work like, yeah, black lives matter. No, black lives don't matter. You know, someone said it like that to a black employee. I mean, how, how dumb is that? All right, there's, a, there's quite a difference in saying something at work like, I would like to see the United States take a stronger stance against right-wing Israeli settlements in the West Bank, saying something like that versus, yeah, the only reason we give Israel a whole lot of money is because the Jews really control the government. I mean, that second statement is not protected under political uh, affiliation or, or someone cannot later say I'm discriminated against because of my politics. I mean, in fact, if a Jewish person or a black person would complain about those statements and the employer did nothing about it, then the employer could be sued by those people for a hostile work environment. So that's not protected. Then there's an issue of can the employer force someone to participate politically in something? Now, this is, this is a really interesting question. There was a tech company in Colorado that basically was forcing people, all the employees, to not only go to these um, George Floyd rallies and stuff like that, but had forced all of these white employees to get some sort of white privilege training, coming to grips with white privilege, forcing someone to admit that the white person is a beneficiary of white privilege. A number of white people didn't like that and said, listen, uh, I, I, I'm the least racist guy I know. I've always treated people equally. I wasn't alive in 1860 or 1960, for that matter. I was born in the 1980s. All right, way after a lot of this at some point, and, and I refuse to do that. That is not allowed, even if it's a political thing, meaning if the employer is targeting somebody based on their race, good intentions and all, the employer is not allowed to do that. So in short, there are many factors that go into political affiliation discrimination. It is not a simple topic at all. It's one that's going to become more and more prevalent in this country as, unfortunately, the nation has gotten more and more divided. And if you are a victim of such discrimination or you believe you are, give us a call. We can help put your career on track.